it's great to be in Amsterdam. <laughs> Finally, get to be in Amsterdam. How you guys doing tonight? Fantastic. We got 24 men. We've got 18 women here tonight. Wow. That can change the world. Amen. 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 Uh, I hope you're excited about your Christianity. Yes. I hope yes. you're excited to be in the right place at the right time with the right message, the right Lord, the right leadership, Bless and God. going and changing Amsterdam for Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Matthew 28, verse 18 through 20. Jesus said, go into all nations, baptize them, and teach them to obey everything I've commanded you. That was the Great Commission, Amen. and that is what we're doing. That's what we're doing right here. That is our mission, and I'm excited to be part of this mission all over the world, that we go into all nations, we baptize people, we make disciples, we teach them to obey, and Jesus said, and surely I'm with you always to the very end of the age. It's great to be here next to them. And we love, of course, Tamiwa. We love uh, Vien. We love just being here with you guys. And uh, it just, what an incredible, uh, just welcome we felt here. And uh, just to feel the spirit in the room and to know that uh, God is going to use this little room right here to change this, this area, the Netherlands all over. We got Rotterdam. We have, we've got so much. I love this place. The Hague. We have Amsterdam. And it's going to be amazing to change this world. This is my amazing wife, April. If you get to know April, uh, you'll like me a lot better. Uh, as Tamimwe said, uh, definitely she has left me with no excuse. Uh, just watching her faith and how she's wow. been uh, doing amazing things. But guys, we're on a mission. And I hope you feel like you're on a mission. God always sends people on missions. Listen to this. When you go to Exodus chapter 3... Come on, bro. Come on. This, this mission we're on, this great co-mission with Jesus Christ. What a privilege it is. Exodus 3, verse 7. The Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I have heard them crying out because of their slave drivers, and I am concerned about their suffering. So I have come down to rescue them from the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them out of the land into the good and spacious land. A land flowing with milk and honey. Go down to verse 9. And now the cry of the Israelites has reached me, and I've seen the way the Egyptians are oppressing them. So now go. I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. That was a commission. Mm -hmm. Go, I'm sending you. Look over to Judges chapter 6. A guy named Gideon, verse 14. The Lord turned to him and said, Go in the strength you have. And save Israel out of Midian's hand. Am I not sending you? Wow. Jonah chapter 1 verse 2. Let's you can go. go look them up later. I trust you it's there. The word of the Lord came to Jonah son of Amittai. Go to the great city of Nineveh and preach against it. Because it's wickedness has come up before me. Let me tell you we're living in a pretty wicked city here. That's right. Yes. You know I go back and I read Genesis 6 and. The Bible says that God's heart was grieved that he made man. He said that his heart was filled with pain all the time because of the wickedness. And you say, man, how bad things were back then. But think, thankfully, it's not that bad now, right? No, I tell you, it's that bad now. It, that describes perfectly Los Angeles today. That describes the United States today. That describes Europe and it describes Amsterdam today. That's right. Well, you preachers are always so negative. Really? <laughs> Think about the sin you see in your world out yeah. there. I mean, we just hung out today a little bit, <laughs> yeah. and you just see it. Yeah. People mock, oh, we don't do religion here. One guy told me on the street, we don't do religion here. We don't do religion in Europe. Wow. And this whole, we don't believe in this one God, this mono thing. No, no, forget it. God's ears hear the cries of the wicked. Wow. Isaiah chapter 6 Mom, verse 8 Let's go. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying whom shall I send and who will go for us and I said here am I send me Amen. if you guys are not missionary minded you're in the wrong place because you will not like this church you will not like it you will not feel comfortable you shouldn't feel comfortable because being a missionary is not something you graduate to later. No. It's not something you get appointed to later. It's something you signed up for in the waters of baptism. Are you with me? 
And God's mission has always been to win new countries for God. Tonight, April and I want to share with you, I think, some scriptures that have always meant a great deal to us mm -hmm. as we build churches. I was in the Middle East for seven years building churches. April and I went out for two years and planted the church in Dubai. We took five ragged souls yeah. out to Dubai. <laughs> sure didn't did. know what we was doing. No. <laughs> And that church today, not, not even five years old, is over 117 disciples now. In Dubai, the Middle East. And I want to share some scriptures with you that I think uh, really helped inspire us. Because we need to be inspired by the scriptures, amen? amen? So get these scriptures down. I think we got about 10 of them, amen? Jeremiah 48, verse 10. I'll go very quickly. Jeremiah 48, verse 10. A curse on him who is lax in doing the Lord's work. A curse on him on, bro. who keeps his sword from bloodshed. Yeah. You think I made that up? It's oh, there. Oh, that, that's, a, that's a preacher's scripture right there. Yeah, yeah. How's your sword? Wow. Has it got any blood on it? Come on, bro. Are you lax in doing the Lord's work? Because this is a mission team. The hopes of, of this whole city rely on these people in here. 24 men tonight and 18 women. That's a pretty good mix. Mm -hmm. We got some lions in here. Hey. Yeah. Oh, let's go. Your sword cannot be kept from bloodshed. It's there for a reason. You know, it's interesting. The sword, the Bible says, is the only thing that's both offensive and defensive. It's a weapon that can be used for both. Wow. But is your sword... Kept from bloodshed. Do you have it out? Do people see it? That's right. Do people know that your sword is useful? That you'll whip that thing out in a heartbeat? That's right. Let me share with you some scriptures. Let's go, bro. And are you lax in doing the Lord's work? I'm going to let April share a little bit. Come on. Well, good evening, ladies. Um, so, can I just be honest? <laughs> I don't usually preach when there's men in the room, so I'm going to share with the ladies, and I, brothers, if you hear something that convicts you, amen, but I'm speaking to my sisters. Amen. Okay? Um, so, we don't do this often, right? We usually have men's and men, women's midweeks, and I can just come in straight and say whatever I need to say. So, um, but no, I really, really loved uh, the scripture that Artie shared. Just a little bit about my life. I grew up since I was three years old in the kingdom. My mom and dad became disciples in 1989 in the L.A. church. And so I was raised in the kingdom. I got baptized as a teenager. Uh, but then, you know, I didn't really know what I was doing. I didn't really have a passion for God at the time. It was just kind of, you know, robotic. It was just kind of what I knew. My whole life was in the kingdom, so I got baptized. But then I, you know, went into the world. I started dating in the church. The church fell apart, fell into sin, went back into the world when I was 23, came back to the ICOC, didn't find the church I was part of when I was a child, mm -hmm. so I left again. Yeah. And I got rebaptized when I was 23 um, for the right reasons, and, and now I'm here. Yes. Hey. So um, I think, you know, God has been preparing me my whole life to be a, a, a sold-out disciple. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I don't know if some of you know my story, but I'll just share with you guys briefly. Come on. So when I was three months old, I got a, heart con uh, a cold, and the virus attacked my heart. I now have cardiomyopathy, or what is known as congenital heart failure. So I lived with this my entire life. When I was a baby, my heart stopped for 30 minutes. The doctors told my mom that I would never walk, I would never talk, I would never get out of the hospital, but God had other plans for my life. Most of my life, I lived pretty stable. Then when I was an early adult, my heart got really sick again, and my doctors put me on permanent disability. So from there, I had my journey of feeling insecure, right. feeling like I had no purpose in my life. Mm. I was just 21, mm. I was sick, and I was at home, and I had money and time. And that's never a good combination for someone who's young, <laughs> right? Oh, yeah. Money and time. Everybody. And so, um, be quiet. <laughs> and so I uh, made some poor decisions, and, 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 but God led me on a journey, and I believe to, to obviously marry R.D. and when we got married, everyone told me, well, you know, you're going to have to go to the Middle East. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. <laughs> and they said, and if you don't want to marry R.D., don't be his girlfriend. Wow. And I said, okay. 
Well, there's that. And so, you know, obviously when we got married, I knew that that was our goal. And but the first part of my heart, I didn't want to, I didn't want to marry her. I didn't want to marry her, deep, but I'll give you context. I didn't want to, yes, context. I didn't want to marry our D because I felt like my health condition would keep him from his dreams from for God. Not because I didn't like him or, or thought he was amazing, but because I didn't want to keep him from his dreams. Right? Because I've never wanted to feel like I'm holding someone back because of my health. But R.D. said, well, if it's God's will, we'll find a new dream. And I was like, okay. <laughs> yeah. Come on, R.D. Come on. And so, yes. And I be but I believe, uh, you know, when God sent us out in 2016, it was God's call for mm. me higher. Uh, because I've been in the L.A. church my entire life. I've seen the ICOC at its highest. 10,000 disciples, filling the Rose Bowl, all these great things. But what really, when you're comfortable, what really does that mean? Mm. You know, we wow. have to test our faith, wow. and we have to go be uncomfortable to see what we're really made of. Wow. Wow. Right? And so, um, in 2017, I, I, uh, so my, my agreement with Kip was that if we go, that I would come back every quarter, which means every three to four months, to see my doctors at UCLA. That was kind of our agreement. So I was back on a regular visit, and for whatever reason, I got an infection in my eye that then attacked my knee, which then put me in the hospital. I couldn't walk. And while I was there, my heart freaked out for some medicine reasons, and my, uh, I had cardiac arrest for four and a half minutes again. And RD was right at my bedside. And, and then, miraculously, my device here in my chest shocked me back into a normal rhythm, wow. and here I am. So, um, yeah. so, I believe that God has a strong purpose for my life. Amen. And that's really what motivates me to be strong for God is because obviously if he didn't want me here, I wouldn't be here. Right. I've had many opportunities not to be here. Right. Um, and so the scripture that R.D. shared, John Jeremiah 48.10, is awesome because in the Middle East, what I told the women is that you know, we just have to go out in public and just be disciples. And what does that mean? It doesn't mean that we preach to everyone we see. It doesn't mean that we lecture everyone we see. It just means that we act as disciples. We have our Bibles open in public. And we do all these different things so that people can see the difference in our lives. That's right. Right? And so, um, quick story. We were doing this. R.D. and I were preparing for our international day. And we had our Bibles open. We were preparing the whole service. And this young girl, Indian girl, walks up to our table, and she's like, excuse me, can I ask you a question? I said, sure. She said, I'm looking for the church. I said, oh, well, come on. <laughs> We're having a service on Friday at this and this time. And then she literally was our first baptism in the Middle East. Wow. And that was, you know, just by us being out in public and just being disciples, wow. being joyful, being out of ourselves. And really in Dubai, you see all the nationalities, they all stick together. Yeah. All the Indians are together. All the Africans are together. All the, you know, uh, Nigerians. The, <laughs> excuse me. All the uh, <laughs> Asians, all of them are just together, yeah. right? Americans are one group. Everyone's together. Yeah. But in the church, we were so diverse, people just couldn't help yeah. but to figure out what was going on. Come on. And that was what drew her to us. And so I always tell everyone, we told the women in there, nobody can take credit for the first baptism of God. <laughs> he literally sent her to us, good. and she was like the easiest conversion. She's like, yes, yes, yes. I'm like, oh, okay. And you know, she wow. was diehard Catholic, but she's like, no, I don't want to be Catholic. I want to be a disciple. Yes. And now she's in India. She leads the teens. She's wow. helping lead the, yeah. uh, the singles. You know, and... and that's what God will do when we take a stand for That's Him. Right. We're not afraid to use our Bibles. So, ladies, yeah. don't be afraid to open your Bibles in public. It makes a huge difference. Wow. 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 So, if you're 42 people tonight, if you want to stay 42, put your sword back in its sheath. Don't use it at all. But if you want to grow, if you don't want to be lonely, then uh, get out and start baptizing. Amen? Yeah. Yeah. Psalm 94, verse 16. Psalm 94, 16. Who will rise up for me against the wicked? Who will take a stand for me against evildoers? God's saying that. Who's going to rise up 
for God. You know, God does need defending in our world. There's a lot of false gods out there in our yes, world. Absolutely. There's a lot of counterfeit Jesuses out there. Mm -hmm. We're not sure which Jesus to follow because there's hundreds of Jesuses. <laughs> right. But the question is, are you ready to fight for God? This is why Islam is winning right now. Mm. All the men are going to Islam. You know why? Because it gives them a reason to fight. And somehow we become kind of soft Christians. Preach. We become Preach. soft Preach. because we're Preach. preaching too much lamb Jesus and not enough lion oh. Jesus. Oh. Let me tell you something. The Bible's full of both. Romans 11, 22 says, let us consider the kindness and sternness of God. Is God a kind God or is God a stern God? No. The answer is yes. Is Jesus the lamb or is he a lion? The answer is yes. If we give too much lamb and we're going to have, we're going to scare all the men away, the manly men, let's preach lion Jesus as well. Let's give a good guy, amen. God needs defending. There's a lot of garbage being taught out there. It's our job to take a stand for Jesus and take a stand against evildoers. Yeah, amen. Thanks, honey. Um, ladies, you know, in, in, in our culture, uh, I think the one thing that stands out to me is that women have become so independent, right? Who here is naturally independent? <laughs> me. So, like, to the max. I don't need nobody. I got this. I won't even worry about it, right? That's my nature. Literally, that's my nature. Even with all my health conditions, I will do things myself, even if I can't do them. I'll figure it out. But that's not who God calls me to be. Right? He calls me to be a submissive woman who Amen. follows our Amen. husbands and the men in the church. And that is uh, something, ladies, that if we really, really embody as women, it will go against the world. Wow. We won't blend in with the world. You know, as women, we shouldn't blend in with the world. We wow. shouldn't try to fight for our rights and our this. And no, 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 no. Just be a disciple. Amen. Just be Come humble. On. Just on, let's honey. follow our husbands because... At the end of the day, Satan has ravished our families by making the men weaker and the women stronger. Right. But in the church, we have to do the opposite. We have to know our roles, ladies, and we have to allow the men to rise up and fill their roles and, and really get behind them. Because when they do, the women will take note, and men will take note, and they'll really feel like they're, they're empowered to be true men. Wow. You know, and, and the Bible says that we can either tear our house down or build it up as women. Amen. And depending on how we are submissive to our husbands, how we speak to them, if we build them up or we tear them down, women will either be more like us or we'll just distract them. And wow. it's like no right. different. Amen. Right. But if we really, really, really just submit to the men, um, it, it will just be a beautiful, glorious thing for God. And I think that's one way, women, that we can. Fight for God Amen, in this honey. world to be the opposite of what the culture tells us. And men, you're not off the hook. <laughs> Women will submit to godly men. Amen. Wow. Be a godly man. Wow. You know, I just thought of another scripture. That's a great thing. This is going to be a freebie here. Let me see if I can memorize it. Jeremiah 29, <laughs> verse 7. God says, Seek the peace and prosperity in the land into which I've carried you into exile. Pray to the Lord for it, for if it prospers, you too will prosper. Amen. Wow. I don't think you guys are in exile here in Amsterdam. It's not that bad. <laughs> but look around you. God has brought you here to Amsterdam all from right. all over. I mean, I, I, one brother from Ghana. One, one, we got sisters from South Africa here, oh. uh, from South America. We got uh, Nigerians here. We've got, I mean, I, I was walking around the fellowship. What's that? Yeah, Jamaican? I'm like, what? <laughs> what? It's just, it's great. It's like, we're just like a tossed salad. There's bits and pieces of everything in here. But whatever the reason, God has brought you here. Now, what is your role? Your role is to seek the peace and prosperity of this city. Wow. You're to pray to the Lord for it. Are you praying for Amsterdam? For if it prospers, you too will prosper. See, that's the order. Yeah. Preach. The city prospers, and then you will prosper. You do God's will, and then he'll take care of your will. Does that make sense? But that's the order. Pray to the Lord for it. If it prospers. Guys, I guarantee you, if, if Amsterdam cranks, God will lift you up, and you'll do amazing.
amazing things. That was a freebie. That's not even in my notes. <laughs> Mark 12, 38. Come on, bro. Hey, when you're, when you're on fire, you got all kinds of scriptures. Mark 12, you guys know the verse, 38. One of the teachers of the law came and heard them debating, noticing that Jesus had given them a good answer. He asked them, of all the commandments, which is the most important one? This is the most important one, answered Jesus. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength, with all you got. Yeah. And the second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment yeah. greater than these. Amen. He couldn't even separate the two. Mm -hmm. Loving God, loving people. He just couldn't separate the two because they're so connected and intertwined. Wow. Yeah. That is not a gimmick. Yeah. That, that, that right there is not some sort of method. That's the way it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. If you're not loving God, you're not going to do anything. Mm -hmm. If you don't love people, you're in the wrong religion. Mm -hmm. Wow. wow. Yes. At, at a bare bone, you say, well, it's easy to love God. It's just hard to love people. <laughs> We're not here to catch fish fillets. We're not fishing <laughs> for fillets. We're fishing for fish, and fish are messy, and they're bloody, and they got bones and scales, and they move around and wiggle. They try to jump back in the ocean when we get them in the net. Quit trying to fish for fish fillets. Let's fish for fish. If you don't love people, listen, at a bare bone minimum, if you're not warm, if you're not friendly, if you're not approachable, then you didn't do well in your Bible studies. Wow. Because at a bare bone minimum, you could come up to Jesus. Sometimes mm -hmm. the, the woman would just get through the crowd just to touch Jesus. Wow. The only person that some of these people would go right at Jesus. Are you approachable? Are you touchable? Are you warm? Are you friendly? Loving God and loving people, that's the way it's going to be done. Wow. And it's not a gimmick. And it's never going to be a gimmick. Yeah. Amen. And this is kind of what R.D. and I are known for. When we go into a ministry, they know we're bringing family. They always say, that, oh, our, the bakers, they're going to bring family. And that's exactly what we do. We just, in Dubai, we built family. We didn't have crazy ideas, methodologies. We just built family. And, you know, I was so grateful for the women that went with me, Anna, Deo, and Janina. Um, you know, and Anna, she, this one sister, she, her whole dream was to be in the Middle East. <laughs> And her whole life, literally, since so she was a little girl. She's a Latin woman who dreamed to be in the Middle East. I'm like, all right, girl, let's go. So we went, and she literally, I would be in the kitchen making the food, because, you know, I'm not as warm as she is. She's very warm. And I would just bring her visitors to Bible Talk, and literally by the end of the night, this girl would think that Anna was her best friend for years. And I'm like, fabulous, great, you know, I'll feed you a good meal and Anna will make you feel loved. And by that time, you're going to be in a Bible study, yes. you know, and so we have to Teamwork. serve as team. Know your strengths, ladies, Amen. know what you're good Come at, on. you know, and don't be afraid to use your strengths. You guys are here to work as a team. Amen. It's not about, look at me or my Bible studies or my, 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 let's do this as a team, wow. right? And that's exactly what, uh, what we do. To build ministries. And so, you know, the John 15 says, Greater love has no one than this, that he laid down his life for his friends. You know, and every time I read this scripture, mm -hmm. I always I just think about Jesus' heart because Jesus laid down his life willingly. Yeah. You know, he didn't there was no like, oh, should I should I sacrifice? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Uh, I guess fine, yeah. we'll do it. No, he just willingly yeah. did it. And ladies, if we're going to serve, we got to serve everyone. we got to serve the lost. we got to serve the church. You guys got to serve Vienna. You know, leading a ministry is not easy. Well, I'm no. just telling you a secret. It's not easy. There's a lot of pressure that comes with it. Yeah. A lot of uh, faith that is needed. And when there's a sister in my ministry who just says, hey, bro, I saw this need. I did, I did it for you. I'm like, thank you. I appreciate it. You know, it, it, just see the needs and fill them. Don't wait. To be asked what you can do. Just look at it and just do it. And Vienna's not going to tell you no. She's not going to say, stop serving. Please stop. Please stop. Stop serving you me. Know, don't do that. Please. Please. Stop, stop loving people. Stop. Stop it. You know, no, she's going to say, Stop serving me. And do it. Do it. And that's literally what wins people over. It's just serving people, giving your whole hearts, giving your whole lives, no matter what. And, you know, people like to say, oh, well, my physical family. 
Well, guess what? Through the blood of Jesus, we're all physical family. Hey. Right? Anyway, that if my little sister called me in the middle of the night and said I needed you, it's the same heart we should have for the disciples. Wow. Wow. I would drop anything for her. She's my sister. Wow. I love her. She's amazing. But all my sisters get the same treatment. You know, sometimes I have limitations. I'm like, I'm so sorry. Maybe your deacon can help you. I can't. But I'll do my best, however I can, to help them. But we all have to have that same attitude because that's Jesus' standard for our lives. So that's what wow. I want you like serving. Amen. That's awesome for the women. <laughs> no. Jesus didn't say, well done, good and faithful evangelist. Oh. He didn't say, well done, good and faithful song leader. Oh. Well done, good and faithful whatever. He said, well done, good and faithful servant. Yeah. And that's what we should identify with. Uh, another one, 1 Corinthians 16, verse 9. Paul is writing, he says, a great door for effective work has been opened to me, but there are many who oppose me. Think about that. God has opened up a door of effective work here, yeah. right here in Amsterdam. And don't forget that there's going to be opposition. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, mm -hmm. waiting for some, somebody to devour. 1 Peter 5, 8. God has opened up a door for effective work here. Yeah. But know your opposition. Know your en Do you know how Satan's going to get you? Do you know how Satan's going to take you out? You better. Mm. And your discipleship partner better know too. Yeah. How's Satan going to take you out? You got to know thy enemy. Wow. And just know that no matter what, when God opens a the door, there's going to be opposition. Wow. It was always like that. And, and remember in Acts 4.29, they didn't pray for God to take it away. Wow. They prayed for boldness to stand up under it. Wow. You got to be bold as lions. Amen. Wow. How about this one? Romans 15 verse 20. It has always been my ambition. To preach the gospel where Christ was not known so that I would not be building on someone else's foundation. You're like, oh, that was great back in the first century. No, that's right now and that's right here. That's right. That's right. The gospel is not known right here. That's right. You say, okay, we went to the Middle East. You line up 100 people in the Middle East. How many do you think are true disciples? Yeah. I just go to a, a, the food court. Yeah. 100 people against the wall. How many do you think are real disciples? Yeah. Yeah, probably zero. Yeah. Go out here in the middle of Amsterdam and line up 100 people. How many are real disciples? Zero. It's the same odds. Preach, bro. It's the same odds. You are pioneers. That's right. Yeah. Woo! You're, you're the pillars. I say there's only two types of pillars. There's the one that holds up the strength and the power of the church. And there's caterpillars oh. who crawl in on Sunday, oh! <laughs> sit in the back, Leave early, crawl back in their cocoon, and you don't see them again for another week. Are you a pillar? Or are you a caterpillar? I know in pillars, you know, I sleep on one down in the south. What kind of pillar are you? Are you a pillar that holds up the foundation of the truth? Guys, listen. Preach the gospel where it's not known. It's not known here. It's your job to go preach the gospel. Yeah. Yeah. Some people, they may never hear the gospel if it's not from you. And again, you're pioneers. If you stay faithful, 20, 30 years from now, people will call you heroes. Yeah. You'll be uh, lifted up for all time. Because you stood, you stood the ground here and you, you helped build Amsterdam. Amen. Amen. Jeremiah 20, verse 9. Amen. Come on. So, I mean, listen, I just celebrated my 29th spiritual birthday last week. Woo! People are saying things about me. I'm like, what? <laughs> Just stay faithful. Yeah. Fight the battle. Yeah. Live by faith. Have an exciting Christian life. Are you excited? Wow. Yeah. Think about that. Are you excited tonight? Mm. Yes. Are you excited yeah. about your Christianity? Uh, because if you're not excited, then you're serving the wrong Jesus. Uh, if you're not fired up about your faith, then you must not be living like Jesus. Because Jesus was fired up about what he was doing. And so if you walk around with a scowl on your face and depressed and down, and you can't get up and worship God, you can't sing to the Lord, you can't clap, you can't open your Bible, you can't take notes, you're in the wrong business. <laughs> Why are you here? The good thing is, is the Bible says you can repent and be like Amen. Jesus. Open up your Bible and start looking at Jesus. He was fired up about his faith. Amen? Yeah. Amen. That's free. Jeremiah 20, verse 9. <laughs> 
So me and Wade said I could go all night. Oh, uh oh. You gave him a microphone. No, sorry, not on a work night. <laughs> God's word is in my heart. Amen. I love that. Like a fire. A fire shut up in my bones. Preach! I am weary of keeping it in, but indeed, I cannot. I cannot. Wow. Great. That is so loaded right there. Wow. Here's the question. <laughs> is God's word in your heart? <laughs> and how would you describe God's word in your heart? Is it like a fire? Have you come to the conclusion that you can't keep it to yourself? You know, when, when April said she would marry me, I was telling everybody. <laughs> I remember one rabbi, I was telling this rabbi, rabbi. and he says, you're not Jewish, why are you telling me? I said, I'm telling everybody. <laughs> See, when you're fired up about something, you can't keep it to yourself, you can't shut up. Yeah. Is God's word like a fire? Yes. Will, will it destroy your insides if you don't get it out? Amen. Mm. Would your next door neighbor describe that? that you that way? The people you're working with, your barista at the coffee shop. Come on. Does the people around you know that God's word is like a fire and it's going to come out? That's right. I am weary of keeping it in. A fire that cannot be contained. A fire that could not stop from spreading, even if you tried. Come on! Wow. wow. You want to comment on that one? Huh? <laughs> oh, sure, sure, sure. <laughs> I know she that wasn't, too. that wasn't planned, but sure. Uh -oh. Oh, fall. Sorry. Yeah, so I agree, ladies. I think that this comes out in our joy and our gratitude. Amen. So we talked about in Kiev, just being grateful for the kingdom. Yes. And when you're grateful, you can't help but share that gratitude. Right. You know, there's so many women out there who are hurting, who are lost, and, and, and they put on a good front, right? You meet them, they look great, they have a great career. But when you really just have a conversation with them, they really have no purpose other than they're trying to make money. And that really doesn't fulfill us, right? No. I, I've thought that before. It's like, okay, now I'm money and I'm more stuff and more stuff and I'm still sad and still depressed and still miserable, right? But when we have God's word in our hearts, ladies, it, it will just come out, you know? And, and for me, I've gotten addicted to watching women change. Wow. And that's really what you have to do. You have oh, to get addicted to it. Um, you know, in Dubai, I'll just share about some women. There was a girl that came. Her name was Jow. She came into our first Bible study, and she was like this. And I was like, uh-oh, this is going to be difficult. So I did Seeking God with her, and I was like, do you want to seek God? She was like, yes. I'm like, okay. <laughs> Don't yell at me. I'm sorry. I'm just trying to help you. And then, you know, we kept going and kept going, and I persevered with her. And literally, by the time she was ready to be baptized, she had a big smile on her face. Wow. You know, she, was, she reunited with her son. Mm -hmm. She was able to forgive her ex-husband who left her many years ago for another woman. Like, it was just amazing to watch her transform right before our eyes, yeah. using the scriptures. Right? There's another girl, Chari. She's, she came. She became a disciple. And I literally, by the time we baptized this girl, she had like three other women studying. I'm like, where do I find more of you? I want more of you. Bring me some more of you. <laughs> you know, and uh, we had so many women out there just dramatically change. Even recently in the States, we baptized a young girl named Haley. She came just from, we met her at a sushi restaurant. Uh, she was just a vibrant girl. She was working hard. I just said, hey, girl, she looks sad. You know when someone looks sad, yeah, but looks they're sad. trying to be happy? Right. And I just said, come on, girl, come, 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 be decide. come to my church. She's like, okay. And she ignored me for about three months. And I persisted with her. She's like, I slept in. She's 18, you know. She's like, I sleep a lot. I'm like, all right, you're going to come to church eventually. So I got her to come. I heard her story, and then we just made her into a disciple. She's just a different girl. And those things right there are what motivate me every day. And, you know, if, but if you don't see women's lives changing, you'll lose faith. It just, it'll just become a burden to you. Wow. But if you're really watching, and it doesn't mean that you have to get every single Bible study. Just be involved. Be a good friend. Just help them. You know, help uh, the women go along in the study. Sometimes people, they don't, you need a good cop and a bad cop. You know? Usually I'm bad cop because I'm a women's ministry leader. But, you know, then I'll find a woman, just be her friend. Just love up on her. I'll do that after we baptize her. But, you know, right now I got to tell her the truth. 
But, you know, in a gentle way, people will follow the word if you really just That's present right. it plainly. Yeah. And it's just, like I said, it just becomes something that you just long for to see another woman changed. Wow. So. And speaking of which, uh, Inez? Inez? Yeah. Well, we saw that. We saw that in for getting baptized. I hope you're not... I hope we're all addicted to that. Yeah. Of watching lives change. Congratulations. I know your daughter's very, very happy. Oh. <laughs> the what is a disciple? Three. You think about it. We're told to go and make disciples. What is a disciple? You know, in John's gospel, he lists three things that make a disciple. Number one, it's a person who loves one another. Mm. A disciple is a loving part of the fellowship. Yeah. He said, by this, the world will know you're my disciple. Wow. Yeah. He said it's a new command. What was new about it? They never taught how to love? <laughs> no. He said, and the reason it's new is because he said the object of the love is each other. They've been taught to love God, love their neighbor, all this stuff. Now he said you love one another. That's right. That's what made it new. And then he said, as I have loved you, he changed the whole standard. Yeah. It's not no longer love your neighbor as you would love yourself. No, no. You love each other the way I have loved you. He changed the whole scope. Wow. Mm -hmm. wow. And then he changed the whole reason. He said, this is how the world's going to know you're my disciples. Wow. Mm -hmm. So how about it? When you walk into fellowship with each other, do people feel the love? Mm -hmm. Do the lost see the love? That, literally, that's how he says it. Yeah. That's how the lost world, it's not by how big your hat is, mm -hmm. by how big your church building is, by how many scriptures you know, by you, you, whatever. It, he says, by your love for one another, that's not a gimmick. When people walk into your service, do they see you're loving one another? Yes. I mean, some of you, I don't know. I was like, I'm not sure. It's like, uh, you know, Whoa. I don't know. Out, the Bible says share everything. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying be brazen about COVID-19, but are you a loving part of the fellowship? Remember, that's the decision you make before you're baptized. Mm -hmm. The yes. second thing Jesus said, he said, if you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. So that means you've got to be holding to Jesus' teaching. Are you? How's your Bible study? Are you learning more about Jesus? Are you learning more about his character? How he acts, how he reacts, how he approaches each situation? Are you becoming more like Jesus because of your studies? Are you abiding in Christ? Wow. April's reading a book now called Jesus the Same, which is about the character of Jesus. So powerful. Written in 1905, 6, and 7. It was a series yeah. of sermons priest in New York. Great book. But it's all the different characteristics of Jesus. Guys, Jesus had a lot of different facets of his character. It wasn't just attendance, baptism, and contribution. Wow. There's more to Jesus than ABC. <laughs> Learn more about Jesus. Abide in him. Are you holding to his teaching? And the third thing he says, are you bearing fruit? Yeah. yeah. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit. Some versions say, Proving yourself to be my disciples. Showing yourself to be my disciples. You want to show Jesus you're, you're a disciple? Then be fruitful. Yep. Are you loving one another? Are you being fruitful? Are you holding to Jesus' teachings? You know what? According to John, that makes you a disciple. And if you're not, I'll let you draw a conclusion. Wow. John 4.35. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. We'll speed it up here. John 4.35, we know the story of the Samaritan woman, right? I hope I got your attention. He, yeah. When it gets quiet, either people are bored or they're convicted. Uh -huh. I don't know which one. <laughs> but I don't even know what time it is in my brain. I'm so jet-lagged. God did not want us here tonight. I, I promise you, uh, there were forces of evil that did not want us here tonight. I promise you that. Uh, it was a, the journey. They almost didn't let us in the airport. Uh, and then, of course, we got here, and April put her... We were taking pictures, and of course, there's so many bikes here. <laughs> April literally put her bag with our, our wallets, everything everything in it, in the wrong basket of the wrong bike. And 30 minutes they later, looked the they looked the same. They were green. I'm like, you did what? <laughs> and then, I was thirsty. April's uh, little canteen there was empty. So I went out looking for a water fountain. I thought I found one. You know, it had this little pump on it. I'm just pumping water into the thing. I'm like, dang, this is coming out slow. And then I took a big sip of water, and it was hand sanitizer. <laughs> Listen, Satan did not want me to speak tonight, but uh, it tasted like uh, I don't know, rubbing alcohol. I don't know, but anyway. 
I'm very sanitized now, John. 4, John 4:35. True story. Don't get it open flames around me for a few minutes. Yeah, I've got to wash that thing out, honey. I'm sorry. It's, uh, it's sanitized now. Oh, okay. Jesus is finishing with the Samaritan woman. Yeah. Come on. Come on, bro. And she goes back into the town. And Jesus' disciples go in to try to find a McDonald's or somewhere. And, you know, That's right. and they come back out from Sychar. And, 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 and Jesus is like, hey, Jesus. Uh, did, you haven't had a chance to eat. And he's like, look, I have food you know nothing about. But you should. And then suddenly, this woman is bringing the whole town of Sychar out. They're all coming out to meet Jesus. And Jesus says there in verse 35, it's such a great scripture. Do you not say four more months and then the harvest? He says, open your eyes. Look at the fields, and he's literally pointing towards the people coming from Sychar. Mm -hmm. Open your eyes and look at the fields. They are ripe for the harvest now. Yeah. Wow. Why do I say that? Because that reads the same today in Amsterdam as it did in Sychar back in the first century. That's wow. right. Come on. Open your eyes. Focus on that. Just when you walk out in the morning, you think, okay, lead me to some soul today. Teach me, Lord. Just what to say. Mm -hmm. Open your eyes and look at the fields. They're right now. Mm, amen. I love that. Uh, I just want to share some stories about actually practicing in Scripture in the Middle East. So, you know, when you pray to God to help you find an open soul, He will. Uh, so we were in the Middle East, and R.D., we went out there with just five people. R.D. had to work full time. He was a song leader, and he was the evangelist, and he did everything else. Wow. And so we said, okay, we need a song leader. We had another brother that was living a double life. He was crazy. And so we're like, he's not helping us. This is not helping us. Our D's working, not helping us. We need to find some song leaders. We need to do something. So we go out and share our faith with them all. And I was like, God, please, please, who, who, who? And he said, that girl right there. I don't know why, but he said, that girl right there. And I was walking up a ramp, and, you know, of course, my heart, I was out of breath. I was like, ooh, okay. But he wants me to share with that girl right there. I can't get to her right now, but I was like, so Anna came. I said, Anna, go share with her right there with the baby. Hurry, hurry, hurry. So she went over there, and then R.D. came. I said, R.D., please, go, go, go. She has a husband. And so he went over there, and then and finally when I caught my breath, we went over there, introduced ourselves. They literally came out to service. They got baptized. Wow. And little, uh, little, little did we know, they were both trained musicians. Wow. And we were like, oh, thank you, well, God, right? Yeah. Like, thank you. Not only did they get baptized, but her sister got baptized. And then she's like, well, my parents are going to be really upset. They're diehard Catholic. Die well, hard. two months later, they got baptized. Boom! Yeah. And so, yeah, so he baptized the whole Ocampo family, they're called. And uh, the four of them, the mom and dad, and Mitz and Andrew are now in the Filipino church, Manila. And Mitz and Andrew lead a Bible talk. Their parents are faithful. And Michelle, she serves tirelessly in the Dubai church. You know, but God provided for us when we saw uh, Dubai just like an open harvest. He will bring the people. Yeah. But you got to have the faith that there's women out there who want to know God. And we just have to be bold enough to share it with them and, and not let... Our, our faith diminish who we share with and not make judgments on people, on, right? Sometimes the most women I've studied with were the ones who look the most close. Then I get in a study with them and they're the most open. Yeah. You know, so we just got to allow God to lead us to the right people and wow. he will. Great. Wow. Amen. Amen. Mark chapter 4 is very clear what April was referring to. It's a parable of the sower and it's very clear. Jesus is saying, don't Worry about the field. Just throw your seed. It's free. There's plenty of it. Just throw the seed. Don't prejudge the soil. Don't try to determine who's open and who's not open. Because I didn't look very open when somebody shared with me. Did you look very open when somebody shared with you? Don't prejudge the soil. Just throw it out there. Amen? Amen. I don't know how many scriptures I'm up to, but uh, I, I think I'm on my last one. Thanks, hon. Um, just throw the seed. It's free. I know we like to prejudge the soil. Oh, he don't look open. Mm -hmm. Oh, she don't look open. I'm just going to keep on walking. Yeah. No, wow. throw the seed. Here's your seed. Here's your seed. Here's your seed. Yeah. And maybe they're not open. 
And maybe you get persecuted. You know, I read about some persecution in the Bible. You know, like Antipas and, and uh, Revelation 1. I don't see any blood, but you know, oh, I got persecuted today. What happened? I invited somebody to the church and they said no. <laughs> they said no, the humanity. Whatever. My gosh. <laughs> Jeremiah 12, 5, B says this. If you stumble in safe country, how will you manage in the thickets by the Jordan? If you stumble in safe country, if you stumble now, when you got it so good, I mean, you got great leaders, you got some wisdom in this room here. Yeah. You've got a, a good mishmash of everything. April talked a lot about um, uh, teamwork. Uh, you can meet anybody in this city, and somebody here can relate to them. Yeah. Oh, I want you to meet my sister so and so. Oh, bro, I, I want you to meet my friend. I guarantee you, you can win anybody there. Yeah. If you stumble now, when you got the Bible, when you got everything, what are you going to do when Christianity is illegal? Wow. Yeah. What are you going to do when you go on a mission field to a place that maybe doesn't like you sharing about Christianity? Seven years in the Middle East. Don't stumble in safe country. Amen? Amen. Amen. How will you manage in the thickets by the Jordan? Wow. My last scripture. Now, I'm going to share this tonight because I have my own little stash. Anybody got their own little Bible stash? I got a little Bible stash that I don't like to share. It's my personal stash. I just kind of keep it to myself. And every once in a while, April's like, you should share that from your stash. I'm like, no, I'm not going to share it. But tonight I'm going to share with you my stash. It's my final. Come on! No. Come on, bro. I love you guys. It's my private stash. Stash. I'm going to give this away. It's free. Galatians chapter 6, verse 23. And we'll end here. I love being with you guys tonight. I hope you haven't been too long winded. I love preaching with my wife. This woman is an amazing woman of faith. Uh, when I first met her, I, I had never met a woman who knew the Bible more than she did. And I had never met a woman with as much power and fragility as I had ever seen her. A powerful woman, yet fragile. And I just fell head over heels for her. And look at her today. Man. Uh, we're, uh, we're leading a super region now in Los Angeles. And uh, I just, I, I marvel at how much she's growing in our six and a half years of being married. Okay. My private stash. Galatians 6, verse 23. Paul says, peace to the brothers and sisters. And love with faith from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace to all who love our Lord Jesus Christ. With an undying love. Wow. wow. I love the way Paul ends this beautiful letter to the Galatians. He literally says, loving Jesus with an undying love. Amen. But what does that mean? What does that mean that you love Jesus with an undying love? That means you're in it for the long haul. That means you're, you're going to finish the race. Wow. That means you're, you're being a disciple. Mm -hmm. That means your zeal is more than skin deep. Mm -hmm. That means if Jesus says do it, you're doing it. Yeah. It's not some intermittent thing that you do. Mm -hmm. Christianity is not a costume you put on for Sunday morning. It's who you are. It's what you do. Yeah. We don't go to church. You know, they didn't go to church in the first century. Church was not a building you went to. Church was a family you belong to. God's claim on your life is total. Mm, amen. It's not partial. Come on, honey. How are you doing in your undying love for Jesus Christ? Have you compromised your mission? Go back and read like 1 Samuel 15 about how Saul amen. compromised his mission where the, the literally Samuel said, have I not sent you on a mission? God has you on a mission. You're, you are a missionary. Don't wait to go to somewhere in China or somewhere in the Middle East that you can't pronounce. You're on a mission field now. You're here now. Don't compromise that. Deep in our hearts, I think many have always suspected that that's the way it's got to be. If there is a God, 
if his word is true, and if we're to follow him, we know that we are supposed to live for God. Amen. Do you have an undying love for Jesus Christ? I'm going to let April share and we'll wrap it up. Amen. Awesome. I love what RV shared. I just wanted to end by sharing some great news out of L.A. So just, uh, RD didn't really give you the details, but RD and I lead over, uh, we lead four regions in L.A. So we oversee three and we lead the Ventura region. Wow. And so our missions goal in L.A. is usually really, really big, right? And usually we give them the number and they're like, oh my gosh, like why? And we're like, it's okay, it's going to be fine. And you know, the Ventura region, when we first took it over, they were having a hard time, really hard time with missions. They barely met it. They were just really stumbling. But three years later, the Ventura region literally hit their missions a whole month early and we're at 105% just last week before we left. Wow. And so these, the, they really, um, yeah, yeah, this week we're at 109%, but as a super region with four regions, we're at 95%. We still have a whole month to go. Yeah. And so, you know, I, I just want to encourage you that the brothers and sisters in L.A. are sold out. They're working hard. We all have the same mission, and we're all trying to accomplish the same goal, which is to see the world evangelize. So just encourage them. If you know any of them, congratulate them. They've been working hard. They've been, they've been really giving their hearts to just making sure that the, everywhere else in the world feels supported by, by their missions and giving. So Amen. that's what I want to share. Amen, guys. Well, it's been a great midweek. Uh, I hope I left you some scriptures that you can go dig in. But you know what? Go find some of your own. Yeah. The Bible has 1,188 chapters. It has 31,302 verses. It has 750,000 words. It has 3.5 million letters. Go dig out your own scriptures. Amen. Amen. My point tonight is you're a missionary. Come on. Make sure you don't fail in this mission because God needs you. We're on a co-mission and what a privilege that is. Never forget who you are and never forget whose you are. I love you. April and I love you guys. We're so grateful you gave us this time. We love you, Amsterdam. We love you, the world.